Okay, what we're going to do is now light up my old one. Um, the one that's already got the mantle in. I'll show you how to do the, the, the mantle fit and the pre-first time lighting method um, with the new one. We'll set up the new one from scratch. Well, I'll just show you this anyway. So here you've got the gauge. Make sure that uh, the power fit in, in the, the tank. Make sure the, the little valve is closed. Is. And then pump this up to you get the two bar. So it can take up a little, a little while. Okay, that's up to the two bar now. Uh, it takes a little longer if there's less paraffin in it. One, if it's nearly full, you get the pressure up quick, of course, because you can press in less air. So you can see it's run to two bar there. I'll turn that brown now. Move them out of the way. Now I use a trusty Zippo with a gas insert, um, mainly because you can direct the flame with a good gas lighter or any other lighter will do. But what we're trying to do here now is light the pre the aggressive preheater. So you can hear that. Count to 90 seconds. That I think should be long enough. I'm turn it around slightly. The arrow is facing upwards. I personally think this is the wrong way around. So you think the flow would be upwards to, to, to light the mantle. But well, that's in the off position. So we're going to rotate this round now. Completely 180. It will allow the flow of preheated paraffin through to the mantle. You can see the light lights and you can now turn off the preheater and the light is now lit fantastic piece of engineering that will burn quite happily for eight hours on a campsite in any weather and it has been out in some heavy weather personally I love it to pieces, it's a great It's a piece of equipment that feels like it's alive It breathes, if you sat in a field At night time it's really quiet and peaceful You can hear the light Breathing, it's as though it's alive And the only time it needs any attention Is either because it's running out of fuel or it needs the pressure pumping it back up again once you've done the fairly aggressive preheater that can actually run the pressure down so just check the pressure which it has gone down pump it back up to two bars and leave it you'll 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 know what i mean when you it starts to run low on pressure but you can hear the thing start to hunt as it it's it's looking for the pressure you'll know there's something wrong with it there and it's usually fuel or the pressure other than that leave it alone the thing will work fantastically now then there is an awful lot of heat given off the top of here 
um, which is why they have a cooking attachment for it a little bit like a little hobo stove you take the lid off fit the stove on the top might so make use of the heat put a kettle, small kettle on small pot of water you can keep the heat boil some water have a hot coffee whatever you fancy What I usually do with it is I take a bird feeder, a bit of raw iron bent that's usually hanging a bird feeder in my front garden and uh, I stick it in the ground outside the tent door or wherever we sat, uh, maybe around a campfire and uh, I hang it up on the, on the bird feeder and uh, leave it on there all night. So when you want to turn off the light, you just uh, turn the blue dial so the, the arrow is facing upright. That will cut off the feed as far as into the, the light and the light will go out. Alternatively, you can release the pressure uh, by undoing the little valve, let the pressure out. Don't forget to tighten that back up again for when you want to relight it. Leave it outside, don't put it back in the bag, allow it to cool down. It does get very hot, it's giving off a lot of heat. Leave it to cool down and then you can put it back in the bag or use it for the next night. 